Hello everyone, this is going to be a one hour long speech, just in case you're not aware. But at the end of this one hour, I hope and I believe that you all will have enough ammunition to write a compelling speech, even when you don't know what to talk about. Who here struggles to kind of write speeches and come on stage? Somebody is <laughs> So there are a few things that, uh, as a speaker, we all struggle when we are coming. Let me tell you some story. Me, when I was introduced to Toastmasters, that was a long time ago, like around uh, 10 years ago. Somebody took me to a Toastmaster club and they said, you know, they do speeches, people come and talk. They had table topics going on, people were given some topics, they said something for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute, or that's why I did. But then when he prepared, people came. They delivered speeches like seven minutes long. There was so much of content, so much of value to be And my friend said to me, why don't you join the club? Okay, what will I do by joining the club? You just told me that you know table topics are free. I can just come and take part in table topics, I don't have to pay. He said, you know that the, the real one of those masters is in prepared speeches. So you come here and do prepared speeches. I was like, you know what, I can't even think on two minutes at a stretch, forget about coming on stage and writing a story which will add value to people. That's just impossible for me, I can't do it. That was the day, and up until the next seven years, <coughs> I didn't go to any those masters. But I got inspired by seeing a lot of people speaking and adding so much, teaching so much stuff, changing people's lives. And I thought, you know, there is something in speaking. I need to go and learn how to do it. How to be there like those people standing on stage, confident and just you know, giving whatever message they have, or just clapping. Do something, you need to learn about it. So in today's workshop, I will tell you how we can do that. And when I did my first speech, I didn't know what it is going to be. Like icebreaker, okay, fine, I can tell you my history in a chronological order. I said, when I was 10, I was 15, da, 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 da. this is how my life is. In five minutes, we can talk about it, right? But then when it comes to the speech number two, where you have to find a topic and talk about that for seven minutes, I was like, where is the topic? I didn't know what to talk about. There are, there are so many people who give you so much complex, the people who have had real shit in their lives. Somebody who has been in a very disastrous situation, been to Everest and saw some people dying in front of their eyes. Those kind of experiences. Those people come on stage and they instantly connect with people and then they're cheering you stuff. But the problem or the good thing with me is that I've never had any such experience in my life. Good parenting, no childhood, childhood abuse, right? No <laughs> lips broken, nothing of that sort, which I can come and say, you know what, I struggled. I was there and then I moved and then now I moved. So I didn't have any of those. So like, I don't have any story. What will I talk about? Then, when I was listening to some of the people who I admire, and people were asking them some other questions. You know, tell us about how can I motivate myself when I'm really in a low mood or whatever. And these people have something going on in their hand, and they prepared a stretch structure on the go, and they just deliver that. And they spoke for five minutes. Uh, all those five minutes looked like they had good structure to it. And then I realized, can we do that? Can we find topics to speak? And Walking on the road, I looked at uh, during autumn season, the trees had no leaves on them, and some of those trees, look, during autumn you would not see in this country, some of the trees, they get absolutely no leaves on them in winters. And they're massive, big trees. Not a single leaf. It looks like that tree is never going to green again. Anybody else felt like that? During autumn, most of the trees, they're like, man, they're, this is it, end of the world. It's looked like that. In India, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's only this country. So when I saw it, I was like, really surprising. But then when these same trees, and I can tell you, from my balcony, there was a big club, like David Wright's gym, which has a massive parking, and a tennis court and whatnot. So I get a free chance to watch tennis matches there. <coughs> only in summers. During winter time, when the, sorry, only winters, during summer time, when their trees have all those leaves, you can't see. It's like completely blocked. If somebody has put a wall. So that much of change happens. There's a lot of learning happening here. Right? It's the same tree. There's a different phases in the tree's life. We can learn a lot. And similarly, I thought you can learn from anything. There are lots of stories everywhere, wherever you look. So what we'll do today, we will find such story today from you guys, and we'll write a speech on it. Sounds good? So I will take my uh, workshop in two different sections. First, 
and I'm, I'm using some tools to tell you all that. That's your how to. Uh, the people on Zoom can see. Um, do you mind sharing the screen? Okay. Oh yes. I can't see. Perfect, thank you. All right, so first thing, how do we write that speech? There are three things that I kind of divided that into. First, we talk about the mindset. And everything that when I'm trying to learn, or when you see people, what is different between a very successful person in whatever they're doing versus the rest of people is mindset of the person. So let's understand why some of us struggle with the idea of coming out and sharing our messages on stage, where other people just, you know, just, just do, just, they just talk on stage as if they're talking to their friends. So what's going on? So let's go back in our past. When we were kids, we all have been kids, right? When we were kids, before the school years, really. School as in year one, two, three is okay, but after that, I'm just talking about up until you were seven, seven years old, eight years old. Kids do not have any hesitation in speaking anywhere in the world to speak. They are really good in leadership. You will see like five-year-old telling, oh, you come with me, you come with that. Right? That's leadership going on. If they want something, if they want a chocolate in Tesco's, they will get it. They know how to pursue parents. They have excellent persuasion skills. And they're confident. They are thinking about, oh, I'm okay, is my body language okay? It's there. It's there in all of us when we were kids. But because of social conditioning or whatever, peer pressure, or somebody says something, and then you kind of forget that skill. So we know that we had it when we were kids. What about uh, our older generations? You know, our ancestors? Let's go really far. Humans are, anybody knows how old are humans? As like, when was the first human homo sapiens? 70,000. 70,000? Anybody? Around 200,000 years. So we have 200,000 years of history, and the oldest civilization is only 6,000 years old. So you can see what percentage of our time we have spent as hunter gatherers, and what we were doing then, before we had a civilization. We were learning by each other's experiences. Hunter gatherers were sitting around the fire talking about how to save our lives when we are in jungle, when we are surrounded by some animals or whatever, how to survive. How to survive. And those kind of things were happening in the <coughs> Today, there are so many tribal areas in uh, Papua New Guinea or in Africa also, tribal people who live in jungles. Their sole survival depends on how and what they learned from their ancestors, like their family. So how do they do it? They just sit around the fire or whatever, and then they talk and they learn. It's, things have changed. The fire then got converted into a radio in our, let's say, 50 years ago. People were sitting around the radio station, right, listening to BBC and talking about things. And then 10 years later, let's say 20, 25 years ago, it was replaced by television. So people were watching television and then they're talking. Now it is social media. So we are only, the, the problem with that is that we are only consuming a lot, we don't ask questions. Because social media is just doing so much of knowledge. So the history tells us that we are, we have speaking in our deoxy rival nucleic acid. Also, my us. You all know it, you all have it, you all are born speakers. That's not my luck. Now with that, what I want you all to tell me, us, that's us, right? So let's go to this. What do you think is your limiting belief, which tells you mm, maybe a can or maybe anything, just, just say it, say it loud, I'm all right. Forgetting what you're saying. Forgetting what you're saying, okay? Boring. Oh, boring. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Nothing to say. Nothing to say. Being too nervous. <laughs> Being too nervous. Too nervous. I'll run out of the room. Run out? I'll run out of the room. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why? Why don't I do it? Yeah. Being taking the Japanese. Trying to play the game with the Yeah. 
Being sick yeah. on stage. Yeah. How to make it interesting. How to make it interesting, so I can't make it interesting. <clears throat> Doing something embarrassing. Embarrassing, yeah. Anything else? Who went out? Come on, let's do it. It being so bad, you never want to do it again. Reputation on damage, yeah? Reputation. <laughs> Fear of judgment. Judgment, yes, of course. There's fear of judgment and fear of failure. Yeah, the first few things. Actually, that letting yourself down. Letting yourself down. Time for parents and other religious. Anything else? Anything else? This is a lot of things we think people thought I was like this, but now they see I'm like that. Like if you're a word meeting and you got really nervous and you think well, I've lost all the good, the good um, opinion that people have. <laughs> yeah. Scared of exposing. Yeah, or losing your yeah reputational damage. Don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, maybe if something's gone badly before in the past, you worry about it happening again. Mm -hmm. Not getting paid because it's so rubbish. Losing my job. Did you lose your job by being back? No, that's rushed. I don't even know how you do So, it's <laughs> dying to us. Some are rational beliefs, some are emotional, some are irrational, and no. There's no supportive evidence why we have it, but we still do have it. It's a big stuff. Now, all of you have these limiting beliefs that we just saw. What does we all have? I said that you all have a speaker here. But where is it? I'll just list down a couple of things, a couple, four or five things, that will make you feel that you actually have a speaker here. You all have a story. Your story might not be somebody who had a very bad experience in their lives. They still have a story. What is the story about? The story is something that triggers your emotions. For example, this one. I opened the BBC and I saw a news item there, which was four kids in Colombia. Anybody from Colombia? Four kids in Colombia survived 40 days without any help. And I read that story. I generally don't read news with news, but I read that story, and that story was so touching that I went to the website which I would never otherwise go to. <laughs> so I opened Daily Mail to read because they have pictures. They, they tell you what exactly happened. And they did. They had the pictures of the kids and they have videos of the kids, kids talking, rescuers talking to them. I actually could feel there was something weird happening in my cheek. Tears came out. That story is so touching. Just imagine their mother died in front of them. The eldest of the kids was 13 years old girl. Youngest was one year old. And when, we, when they saw the rescuers, the 13 year old was holding the one year old in, in her arms and said, my mom is dead. That was the first word she said. That thing that I read today became a story in my life because that touched me. And it could be anything. It could be something that happened with you. You saw somebody going on the street doing a horrible thing. You just liked it. Might be somebody doing some micro Or maybe on the, what is it? Trafalgar Square. Near Trafalgar Square. What is it? Another square where people do a lot of tricks? Yes, it's Covent Garden. Just next to that. Covent Garden. Thank you. So you go to Covent Garden and you see a lot of people doing different things and they're telling some stories also. They're bringing people in. I used to sit there and watch them for a couple of hours. I really find them entertaining. They touch my emotions. They're my story. If I have to tell about balance, then they probably will be teaching me some tricks on how to balance. So stories are everywhere. That's the fact. And we all have them. Right? So that's the story. You have that story. You have self-doubts. Everybody has. You have so many things. It could be about anything. But we do have self-doubt in any area of our life. Maybe in your family, maybe in your career, maybe in your finances. It could be anything. I'm not good at making money. I'm not good at making speeches or something. So we have a lot of uh, self doubts. But at the same time, we also have our authentic self. We have seen something that nobody else has. We know something that nobody does. 
we can teach people something that no one else can from the perspective that only we have because we are our authentic self. Everybody has their own persona, their own individuality. So you all have that authenticity, your confidence. Some say that I'm not confident enough. Great, that's a good story. Let's talk about that. Why am I not confident enough? I can talk about it for hours because I was not. I come from a Hindi medium. I was a Hindi medium student. So I was not English medium. I studied my first English uh, in my university. That's where I have this English to Hindi dictionary and the textbook. Reading the textbook, reading the dictionary, reading the da 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 da. That's all I learned. So I have so much confidence issues. So I can never be on stage and talk. So we have all of this. You know what? I'm going to do this. With my experience and with people with my experience, all of this. Seriously. Made up. You wanted some support to how you are feeling. You wanted to give some logic to it. So you created all of this. You know, humans are very emotional. They decide based on their emotions and then they find logic to support that emotion. Is it not true? Even the people who are sitting in the big banks or doing some big thing, politicians or whatnot, can't see the pain, but this is also going <coughs> Let's transform that now. It's all gone. It's not in your head anymore. Whatever you just said. What we want now is to implant something new in your brain. As a speaker, what are the great qualities of a speaker that you want yourself to have? Tell me. That's right. Quick. Engaging. 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 Wow. Hima. We all are this. Say I'm engaging. I'm humorous. I'm natural. When I'm on stage, I'm so confident. You know Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins. He says that there's something called incantations. He says that your affirmations plus emotion is incantation. So when you say I'm confident, I am confident. I'm Tony Robbins, right? I'm like I'm, I'm just spitting a microphone. Very seriously. And when you talk to Tony Robbins, you'll probably get high success. Anyway, I'm clear. Clear in my speech. I'm clear in my thoughts. I'm clear in my objectives. I'm valuable. I can give value to you. So I know something that nobody else does. I'm articulate. I don't have to explain things. Guess what? I'm born charismatic. Am I? Am I? Yes. Say it for you. I am charismatic. I am charismatic. <laughs> think about all of this. Because so many people said it, you will probably think of it in the night time. Think of it again in the morning. This is called, I'm not, this is not a new or linguistic programming lecture, but what we just did was an exercise of changing your thought patterns using energy. You're just destroying what doesn't serve you, you're bringing something that is useful. Why? Really? So, you got that? We did our affirmations. So that's what we are now. We are all speakers. We all know how to write compelling stories. Okay? Now let's get into how actually we do it. So let's go into our speech. So let's read my all right. And go to the second section, which is my speech. Very quickly, first thing you do is find a topic. You need to find a topic to speak about. Identify a topic. What do you need to identify? A problem and what pain that problem is causing, and what could be the solution. <laughs> Only these three questions we have to ask before we are going to write a story. Okay, very easy. The problem could be, say for example, uh, <coughs> the problem could be the use of uh, mobile phones. People use so much mobile phones, that's the problem. What is the pain it is causing? The rate of depression is all time high, and screen usage is one of the key reasons for that. That is the pain point. Children are not as clear in their thoughts as they used to be. That's another big problem. And then you can have you can have many more for, for a particular problem. And then you have a solution. 
If that solution, I will teach you something that can make your Hawaii a little bit better if you don't use that solution. So if I know these three answers, I get my topic of the speech. That's my first story. But now I know the topic of the speech. We'll do an exercise, so we'll do it uh, kind of practical ways. So once I've found my speech topic, I need to prepare it. How do I prepare it? Very simple structure, all of those masters know it. You have a body, you have takeoff, you have a body, and you have a length. Simple, you know that. So let's revise that and see what everything should have. The body should have, so your takeoff. Now, humans' attention span, just in case you don't know, is shrinking. And it's shrinking at such a fast pace, you can't even imagine. You know how much, how long is the goldfish's attention span? Okay, it's eight seconds. The humans are worse than that. <laughs> Ten years ago, we were much better than goldfish, but now we are worse than goldfish. Goldfish is very six, seven, average. Very bad. So we need a hook so that people will know what is what's in it for me. The management people call it with me. What's in it for me? So you need to know that the answer to your with me. What am I going to get? That you have to have in your hook in the first part of the session. What it could be? You could say some facts. It's like the the case of depression has been 15% high in the last 10 years, subject to this three years. Something like that. That's a fact. Or it could be a question. Do you know? <clears throat> a question is like, do you know that these many, yeah, the cognitive ability of people comes down by 20%. Only because when we sleep, we use our mobile phone half an hour before sleep. So that's kind of a question. A question or telling you something. Or any code, you can start with any code. Right? So it's like these three things. And then I've left this blank thing, which I'll tell you why I'm it. Then you're going to give the introduction to your topic. I've already told you, you tell the problem statement, the one that we just talked about. It could be anything else. You talk about your pain points, and then you say, in this particular talk, I'm going to address these points using my technique, so that you have, da -da -da -da, this is the solution, right? That's how you do it. So that's your takeoff. It's, it's, it looks like it's quite a lot of sentences, but these could be put together in let's say one or two or three sentences. Maybe four. If it's a five minute speech. If it's a longer speech, it could be longer. And I'll tell you how to make your speech elastic, as long as you want, as long as you want. Then you go on to your uh, personal connection, so you also have to tell that what is my authority, or what is my experience, how can I help you? So you talk to your audience so that they... Some people say, you know what, today we're going to talk about this, I'm feeling very nervous, but let's do it. That's very good idea. Never tell your audience that you're nervous. Never. Imagine this. You are sitting in a class and your teacher comes and says, I'm nervous, let's start the fluid dynamics. And another teacher says, let's talk about this. I'm nervous. Who you would want to learn from? It's obvious, the one who's not nervous, right? So when you're on stage, think like that. Your nervousness, you know why we say that? We say that because we want to get some sort of acceptance, just in case I mess up. Just in case. Then I've already told you. <laughs> then I'm going to mess up. Please don't judge me. Right? That's why we do that. So never tell them. Tell your authority. Tell your experience. I've done this. Yeah, sometimes it, it sometimes may sound a little bit self self-praise. But if it is serving people, you need to do it with them. So when you're coming back to your, um, so that's your introduction. So you've created, let's say, in, in our, uh, our side, in five to seven minute speech, your speech introduction will be three to four lines maximum. Uh, as a speed, my personal speed is around 800 words. I can write for a seven minute speech. So that's my speed. speed. So different people have different speeds. Based on that, I would say it's between 600 to 900 words for a seven minute speech. So you say that your first section should be around 10, 10, 15 percent of that. So like three to four lines, maybe maximum 100 words. But you know, this is not for Toastmaster speech. This method you can apply to that, regardless of how long the, the, the session is. Uh, so we have done that. Now we are taking people on the journey. So we have took off, taken off. We are in the plane. We are sitting in the plane. Now we have to understand. We have to give them so much value so that they are entertained until the plane starts to land. So how do you do that? You've already told them your pain points. Then you start building the story and you give them supporting evidence. In, I'm just taking the same example. Or it could be any other example. Anybody wants any other example? Any other problem? Problem with motivational speakers. Let's say. There are so many of them. Right? You open the internet and you see, oh, yeah, this problem is that problem, it's a lot Your brain is like so much inundated with so much motivation that I can't do anything. <laughs> Overloaded with motivation, right? That's a problem. That's a problem. Do you have a problem? 
you're spending like hours and hours listening to motivation, but you're not doing nothing. <laughs> so that's a big problem. And the main point is you are spending so much time, you're wasting so much time and energy, which is kind of impacting your whatever cognitions or physical activity. There is something about thumb. There is a disease that people have in their thumbs because of excessive scrolling down. Do you know that? Do you know that? There was a disease. I forgot the name. Thumb and something. Thumb something. So that's like, for this particular example, motivational speakers, there are a lot of them. So there is a pain point because there's so much of information and you can't figure out what to do. That's a pain point. And then you go on a story. You talk about, I followed this particular person for, uh, let's say, four months, five months, listening to all, the, all his videos, trying to do things that he was doing. And then one day, he was a coach who was telling us how to eat good food. So all always talking about greens, they were drinking, no smoking, da 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 and then I happened to be at a party with him, and then I saw a glass of red wine in his hand. <laughs> Sees all the while he was talking, you know, no alcohol, etc. And I can see him drinking. That was hard. So that's my story to support my point. That okay, there is some motivation in that, but you know, you might you don't know who you are listening to, right? So it's it's just a point. So I'm saying that I'm going to put that point in that story. If I'm talking about motivational speakers, I'm going to put that point in here. That's where I say I save the point, start building up the story. And then I give you supporting evidence, which I get. And then I will have a transition. So how do you do the transition? So you're going, so this is like your introduction paragraph. I think you're writing a speech introduction paragraph. You have story one, story two, maybe story three, and then a small conclusion. Right? So we are at first paragraph, so second paragraph, which is like your point. So how do you try do the transition? Don't just jump from one story to other. Use some transitional words in addition to this, for example. Use these words. I just put some words. Uh, Additionally, moreover, so you had something which was not a very good experience, but you want to go in contrast and you say, moreover, or in contrast, but there is good good things about it. So for, for the motivational speech thing, but it doesn't matter what they are doing behind the doors, as long as they gave me some knowledge which I can implement in my life, I don't care if they are drinking. That's my other point. That could be my other paragraph. That I can tell that I actually followed that person's advice and I did everything that they told and I changed my life. So that could make my second paragraph. And I did the transition very smoothly. So I told them what was wrong in the first paragraph, then I went to the third, second. If I need to, I can do the third paragraph, or I can do the fourth paragraph, depending on the stories, how many stories you want. So a few things, contrast or in contrast, you can use that in contrast for conversion or similarity. And then you can have cause and effect. If this happened because of that, I become like them. So in my life, when I was a kid, people were bullying me, other kids were bullying me, they were very big, I was very small. As a result, I've become a person, now I always feel that I'm very small. Whoever comes and says anything to me, I just stand like this. It's kind of, you connected both the stories. And you can have, give one story here, you can give one story there. Really good transition. Uh, chronological order, we do it while I got into Toastmasters. Ten years ago I was this, five years ago I was much better. Then I took a pill, and then I lost all my weight, so today I am something like that. Right? They can use fuzzy second week, like that. Illustrations, for example, they give put a point, and then give you an example. You just did this, That's something like that. So those are the kind of uh, things that you can use in the transition from when you're moving from one topic to another. I'll tell you what this section are. And same thing happening in your point two. So you're going to the point two, you're exactly repeating the same stuff, and then you can have point three or four or five or regard how many more. Okay? It kills me. Yes. What's the H and the R? Is that what? <laughs> so in final, when you're concluding your speech, you go with the summary. You tell a brief recap. You you tell the point. I mean, the normal thing that we know, right? Tell them what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then tell them what you just told them. That's what you'll do in your summaries. A brief recap. You just kind of put together all your reasoning, the main points, reinforce the message, right? It's not advisable to use your social media at the night time. You know, whatever. Whatever is your message. Have a memorable closing statement. A quote or a, set, or a reference to the speech stuff itself, and then finally leave them with a call. <coughs> you given a speech, you wanted them to do something. That's why you give given that speech. And then you tell them how to do that. For example, I'm just going to give you this structure, and I want you to fill in the blanks. So there were a lot of blanks you saw. You fill in the blanks and create a story out. So that's my actionable steps from this, right? So that's what we do with the closing part. And then how do you deliver? Mm -hmm. yeah, let's leave this part. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm not focusing on this speech about the stage part of it, because it's about writing a speech. And then you know how to deliver the body language. You can have another workshop on that. It's not a problem. But yeah, that's how you expect it. There are some tools and don'ts. What you should do while you're doing all of that. The edge that you saw in so many places was for humor. 
And once you've got this structure, you've pretty much already written 10 lines so far. Now I'm saying every paragraph, you add one or two humorous lines. Then you say, okay, how do we add humor? That's a challenge, right? A lot of people have the challenge. Joke is one way, which we all know how to add humor and tell a joke. Give a surprise. If you uh, see that uh, speech from Dhananjay Itarachi, the world champion of public speaking, anybody else? See, one of the best speech. Yeah, I thought there is one more guy called Mohammed Khatam. He's another world champion of public speaking, of course not. Amazing speeches, watch them. So, I'll give you an example of this surprise. Ananda Hitrachi is telling the story. He's been to the jail, he's gone to school, and when he comes from the jail, his mom has a, an episode with him. It's like, you made me so. Uh, so, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of you. Yes, the mom is telling, and then he goes to dad. Dad says, son, dad looks at you guys. He says, you have one turn to house. You're 17, you fall down to jail. All that he got from a mom's side. <laughs> now, let's do this. This is just one of the episodes. What he did, he actually gave you a surprise. And he broke the moment. Because you were expecting him to say something on the lines of, your dad is also feeling you know, ashamed of the son. So breaking the expectations created a lot of heat. There are so many examples of this. <clears throat> then, you have, so that's how you add humor. There are many ways to add humor. Some people are like simply humorous, right? The comedians. So I don't know about how do they add that much. So they say impact per minute. If your impact per minute is around uh, one, that means if you get one laugh in a minute, you're really good. If you get like three, four laughs in seven minutes, speak, you can end it. That's how you add it. Um, emphasize the trees, high level trees, like you initially telling that, I mean, in, my, in this uh, mind map, I'll share this with you. I initially have three points, and then I have another three points, and another three points. And that, that applies to high level, and then medium level, you're talking about sentences. So I have been this, I've been a victim, I've been a perpetrator, and then I've been also a The person who sees? Witness. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm just saying the same sentence using three different words. So I'm repeating sentences. Or you can also repeat words. My priority this year are oh, education, education, education. Something like that. So, you all know that we talk a lot about it in Toastmasters. You can use a lot of rhetorics. I just guess put some examples down here. You can use a lot of similes. Similes is something like when you compare one thing to another. Her smile was bright as, as bright as sun, for example, the car sped like a bullet. So, when you have like or as in the sentence, that's a simile. Okay. And when you are comparing something with something really, it's like Life is like a roller coaster. Right? Life is a roller coaster. Right? Or life is right? They're both parallel. Love is a battlefield. Is battle. So use them to to make your speech more colorful. So I say color it with rhetorics. It's like you're not really coloring it, but it's a metaphor. And similarly, you can have the exaggerations where you just say, "I've told you millions of times, right? I've been waiting forever. I've been waiting forever." So those are a few things that we should be doing, and then we have some don'ts. Don't tell that you're nervous, very important. Don't memorize your speech. If you forget one line or one word or sentence, you're in a big problem. You might lose the flow. You might also forget what was coming next. So don't memorize. Don't assume that audience know your speech. A lot of people say, oh, I wanted to say that, but I forgot. Oh, they don't know. Who are you to tell them? <laughs> if I messed it up in my mind, I don't have to tell you that I messed up. That's how I prepared, because there are only three types of speech we give. There are only three types of speeches. One is what we want to give, what we prepare. One, what we give. And one, what we wish we should have given. And they're all always different. They're never the same. Okay? So let's do this now. Select a topic. Now we're going to go into the practical part of it. So we'll very quickly, we have only 20 minutes. So we'll select a topic and then we will try to write a speech on it to see how, how well we can do that. Okay? So let's do very quickly on your phone. If you can open your phone and just slide on this thing. And I'm going to start it. It's already started. So if you can join that as well, scan the code and tell us the topic. Just write a couple of words, maybe, and then we'll see if your ideas are popular. We'll do this speech again. You don't need to work hard, weather is overrated, waking up early, any friends, well being, confidence, well being, history. I want something which is a bigger font. That means if people are, you can write it again, by the way, you can give more answers. So if anything you like here, just write that again so that it becomes bigger and we just put that out. 
space. <laughs> okay. Can we pause? Okay, I'm pausing it now, okay? Oh, sorry. So the most votes we got was for space. But it was space, the topic is space. We need to talk about space. Right, that's really challenging. Okay, let's see. Let's see if our framework can help you that. Help us do that. Okay. So whoever said space, I don't know who said it. Now I'm coming back to my uh, thing that I've told you. Right? Act or step. We we'll use the tools. We use Google for space. Now I don't know if the space was personal space or is the space up there. We don't know. Let's take personal space. Is it personal space? Whoever said it? Oh, you're talking about space up there? Okay, let's talk about the space up there. That's really interesting. Okay, so what's the problem? So let's, just, let's say some facts or steps, right? So you say, let's add some facts. Any fact about state, space? The vastness of space, right? The space is so vast in the large scale of things, we don't matter. You know the kind of things that we are making our hand with the beliefs and whatnot. Doesn't matter. Look in the sky and you see that the sun is not even the third or fourth or fifth or sixth largest star known to humans. It is, I don't know what is the ranking of sun. It's not, the space is very vast. Let's add some facts. It is, so talk about the vastness of space and we go very quickly. Uh, I'm going to use it. I'm use Google, Google for it. Okay. So I say uh, vastness of space. So I'll say. How, how big is space? 93 billion light years. Did you know? Did you know that? Did you know that space size is 93 billion light years? Do you know what is a light year, by the way? A light year is the time light takes to travel. If I say one light year, that means that distance light will take one year to travel. And you know what is the speed of light? 300,000 kilometer per second. Per second. Can you imagine how big is space now? 90 billion light years. So light will take 90 billion years to cover that distance. That big is space. What is the problem? So we got one step. We can ask a question. How, do you really matter? That's my question. Do we really matter? So this speech is going to be a kind of interesting speech, curious speech. We're going to give a lot of information to people, right? So we're just telling where we are, and we can talk about Elon Musk and aliens and whatnot, right? So we got like space, vastness of, vastness of space, this one topic. So you can elaborate on this. 90 million, like I just now did, right? The speech, the light, and blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of give them an like, uh, uh, interesting fact. Is there any quote? So whatever I just now said, I will put that in this test, test, test. Did you know that space is that big? And we are so worried about day-to-day -day life. Things that are not going our way. Things are not happening as we want it. We don't really matter in the large scale of things. A similar logic applies into our lives. When we are at our death, like let's say 19 years old, and we are thinking, you know, the decision that I took when I was 25, and I spent one year thinking about it, was such a waste of time. Something like that, right? So we can build up on that. So you got a problem statement. So I say, problem statement is uh, things don't matter as much as we believe. Something like that. That's your problem state. So you know that okay, people spend a lot of time in very uh, mundane things. What is my pain point? Because of that, what happens? We lose a lot of time. What else happens? We don't realize no my spellings of our true potential. What else is the big pain point? The 90, sorry, 90% 90 of people, as a result, say that they didn't live the life they wanted. Keep in mind, objectives of my talk today are to tell you and make you realize that things are not as big as you make them. I will tell you that in this speech. So, my first paragraph is ready. Is it good enough? Is it giving some value? Yeah. So let's go on to our personal connection. And I can tell you all this because I have been in such a situation. Anybody wants to tell their situation and I can use it? No? Okay, let's try. Let's say, uh, people 
um, people complain so much about their personal circumstances. That's why, I just, that's why credibility, I think, of what is So I'm just telling you that I am eligible to talk about it, creating some authority, right? So that's our personal connection. And many of, many of you who are in the situation or you know somebody who is in the situation will be able to instantly connect with So that's my first part. And I, I think it's a good enough uh, hope in that. Then you state the point. So you say, you find a few things from that problem. You're making things, you're exaggerating too many things. And you start with, let's say, the example that we just saw. I've been waiting forever for you. Or let's say somebody says that, okay, I've tried millions of things, millions of ways. So somebody who is not successful, they will say, you know what, I've tried everything. And then you ask, oh, really? Did you try everything? Okay. No, I mean, I, I tried millions of things, but didn't work out. Then you ask them, okay, can you name a few? They say, okay, not, not millions, so I, I tried thousands of things, but they didn't work. <laughs> you say, okay, name me the thousand things. <laughs> then they will say, oh, well, okay, I tried five things, five, six times, and it didn't work. So you kind of keep asking questions. And then people will realize that they are exaggerating everything. This is just an example of how people talk. But what you talk is how you live. How you say anything is how you say. How you do anything is how you do everything. Because that tells you, tells people your character. Right? So I'm just trying to add that component in here, how we can link it. When we are exaggerating the things, so we'll say that we need to do two things. We should exaggerate what is serving us, and we should get rid of what is not serving us. That's that's fair enough point, right? So we can have our first paragraph on things that are good for us. So we should actually exaggerate them or uh, make them look big. So let's say if I did a speech and ten people liked it, I'll say, yeah, I did a speech and hundred people uh, were clapping and giving me standing ovation. <laughs> that's a kind of good exaggeration for yourself. So you have to just tell it, tell it to yourself so that it, it will make you make you feel how it is when people are standing and giving you ovation. Right? Just just by saying it, you don't have to tell it to anybody. But see, I'm right now I'm framing the speech. speech. So you can write all of that in one paragraph to support that point. That what you should elongate it. Is that what elongate it? Is the same as English? Sort of, right? So what you should do that. <laughs> and, and then in the second paragraph, what we'll do? In contrast, so we'll have a transition of contrast. We we'll say in contrast, we should have done this, but we don't do that. What we do is we look out for the miseries in our lives, and then we work on them so hard to make them look and feel like nobody else has more miserable life than I. <laughs> right? Any example? I just had an injury in my knee. I went to the doctor. So I just fell. When I was running, I fell. There was a pain. I couldn't walk. And then I was like going like this. I felt my life is over. I can't run anymore. I can't do the marathon. I went to the doctor. The physio saw me. The physio said, oh, you know, I've got some LCL, ACL, da 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 tear in your knee. You can't run for a four-seven period. And I was so sad. Uh, running, which was sort of my dream, I will never be able to do that. So, and then, so this is my situation, I'm just trying to tell you a story that this is what we do, but actually nothing happened. I didn't even have surgery. Something happened in my knee, and I made it so big that I started feeling like I can't run anymore. And then, to show people that, because we are giving some value to people, so I have to tell them, I'm telling something negative, I also have to tell them media. Then I'll say, then, in the gym this morning, I met two gentlemen. One who was 86 years old, and he was lifting more weight than me, and another one who had a swing on his hand, and his hand was broken, and he was in the gym and doing exercise. And then I felt like, Shh, don't show a face to them. Because <laughs> I had nothing, and this is a true story, this happened this morning, this very morning, and I'm telling you the truth. Right? So the story just came up, because I felt that this morning when I went to the gym, that gentleman who was 86 years old, he triggered some emotion in my brain, and I remembered it, and I used that story to so that's my second point. So we exaggerate the points which are not serving us, but we do not do that same thing for the things that may serve us. That's my paragraph one and paragraph two complete here. Okay. If you need, you can add third story depending on how much time you have. Because we didn't time it and I'm just, the speech that I'm creating on the go is so fragmented, so we can't see how much time I took. But there's a very good trick I'll tell you about time. You can play with time so well by telling people details of what you're delivering. So if there is a story that you're talking about, so this story could be, I was in the gym in the morning and I, I saw a gentleman, 86 years old, and another one, da, 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 and I felt like, you know, my problem is nothing compared to them because he has a broken elbow. And he was still in the gym. That's one way of telling the story in one minute. But at the same story, if I tell you, this morning, I went to the gym, man, I was still lifting. 
although I have been doing physio for three months, does not heal completely. So my physio told me to sit on that uh, knee extension machine, so I was sitting on a knee extension machine at this time. Where's the weight on the machine? Because I asked, how do you think I'm doing? He said, how old are you? I looked at him. He said, I don't know how old are you, but I am at least six. I can do it, you can do it. So what I just did is, I took you into that story, I gave you more details, because I had more time to give. So when you have to play with time, this, is, this trick really works. You tell more detail of the story. So I was really sad, that's one way of saying it. Other way of saying it, that night I was so shattered. I was sitting in the bathroom, and thinking about my life, and suddenly, tears. Same thing, I was sad. But I was like this set. <laughs> so you can play around with words and, and go into the details. You can come up, come back up if the time is not enough, like we have right now. But you can go into the details to use that time. And uh, so that's here. That's your story three. And then finally we have to recap. In recap, we'll just say, you know, space teaches us, space teaches us a lot of lessons. The lessons from its vastness, the lessons from its darkness, the lessons from its variety. And if we learn, we have capability and we have opportunity to learn from anything out there, then why not just the space? There's nothing. See, we can learn from nothing. And we can learn such great life lessons from nothing. Similarly, like how we can create a speech out of nothing. So you can say something like that in space and maybe have some more quotes about uh, Elon Musk, do a little bit of Googling. We just now did, did it in 20 minutes, but if we have time, you can go into Google and search for some more quotes about space. You get something, use that in your story. And while telling the, while I was telling them, adding the humor, the edge thing, sometimes very complex, ask me what is the edge. That edge was, so you, when you're telling your story here, you add a humorous line. So now you've got the first story about the vastness of space, and inside that, add something which is humorous. Anybody can think of anything humorous about space? <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? Tell me something funny about space. Nerdy space fun and jokes. Take one. Take one. You don't need to. Right? That's how you find humor. You don't have to be the creator of all the jokes. Have you told jokes to your friends or families? Have you? Did you write those jokes? <laughs> then why, when you're wanting to be humorous, you want to use your humor? And borrow it from somebody. Use it. Make your speech. Just link it. Link it with what, whatever message. See if that is emphasizing your message. So that's it. So you can add humor, and that R thing that you saw in there was rhetorics. So if you've written a sentence, which is like a normal sentence, try to see if you can add some metaphors to it. Or you can say, I met this girl and she was very beautiful. So rather than saying very beautiful, you say she was as beautiful as I can use it. Something. Right. So add some rhetoric devices into it. You can use, you can use all of these that we spoke about. Uh, repetition, exaggeration, uh, series, metaphors, etc. Once you have it, you go, you go to your speech. And while you're adding these things, keep your audience in mind, that's very important. There might be something that's funny for you, it might not be funny for your audience. Especially when they are from different uh, countries, a joke in this country might be very offensive than in some other country. Or if your crowd has different variety of people, right? some people crack jokes about about the Pride Month, for example. If your audience has some people who don't like it, make sure that you don't say anything that your audience don't like it. If you don't like it, you kind of didn't succeed in what you were trying to do. All right. This was pretty much it. This is how you can, I can give you this uh, structure thing. It's, there's no rocket science in it. Very simple, we all know the structure and stuff. The extra thing I did, I created some spaces where you can add some rhetorics, create a story, add some transition. And think like this, go to Google, ask Google, Google, go, go to Bard, Google Bard, the AI engine. Go to ChatGPT, ask ChatGPT, they'll tell you not correct this. Right? Using all of that, I believe that you all can create a speech in half Do you think so, if you can use this kind of framework? What program are you using? Oh, okay, right, so this is a program called XMind. You can see XMind.org. Uh, it's, a, it's a, what is it? A mind mapping program. 
Uh, so it's paid? Can you use it? Just for the next one. Well, that concludes my speech. Thank you very much.